as most everybody knows, I work for a major airline. As that, the, the words that strike the most fear into my heart is, Patrick Hamilton, please, can you step up to the podium? When Patrick Hamilton steps to the podium, it's probably, well, most of the time it's because I'm not getting on a flight. As, a, as an employee of an airline, I actually enjoy a privilege and a benefit that I get to fly for free on my company. On other companies, I don't fly for free. I play fly for a short fee, small fee. So that is definitely a benefit in my life. You know, it's like running the jet set, right? Except non-rev travel is what it's called. Non-rev travel is one of the things that just like strikes fear into my heart. And everybody, it has to do it. Because you never know what's going to happen. I went to New Orleans a couple of years ago, did some partying, then we took a cruise. We took a cruise, so we're out in the ocean, got no computer access. It's just not happening for you. And this is how you actually arrange your travel. So because of that, we walk into the New Orleans airport cold. We don't have flights. We don't have anything. We walk up and say, what's the first one? That one. Let's go to gate 47. We go to gate 47, they said, there's no way you're getting on American Airlines flight from here to Vegas. We're like, oh, is there any seats anywhere here? And they say, well, you know what? About noon, one o'clock, there's three or four seats left on that flight. Well, that ain't no good. We sat there for the first one because we got to make sure you never know. Things happen. Well, things didn't happen. Everybody showed up. Damn them, right? <laughs> Everybody made their flights on time, and there's no seats left on the aircraft, and it pushed back from the gate and goes off. The gate agent's very nice. Mr. Hamilton, can you please step to the podium? I step to the podium, and they say, hey, where do you want to try to go next? And I said, I don't know. Give us a minute. Me and Kathy are traveling with another couple. So we step to the side. We're all old hands at this. We know... We know what's going on. We know how we get around the system. And this one's looking really bad. But by now, we're on our phone and really looking at the computer stuff. And we can see that there's like no, no seats. There's, there's just no seats available out of, out of uh, New Orleans today. Well, as we're all sitting there contemplating a hotel room for another night after a two-week trip, Somebody goes, Southwest, I didn't even think about that. Oh, my God, Southwest, why didn't we check that? So we go to our handy-dandy app on our phone. It says ID Travel. And ID Travel says, yeah, Southwest has a bunch of seats. All it costs you is $55 a seat. So we're like, okay, what time is that flight? About 30 minutes from now. There's a problem with the New Orleans airport. They have multiple securities and multiple levels and multiple concourses within the airport. So I have 30 minutes to get to a flight. I have to get schedule that flight. And I also have to clear security again to get there. So as we're running through the terminal, Ms. Kathy, as some of you know, my wife, is punching on her phone. The other couple has just grabbed their junk and they're going. So we're all, we get down to security. Of course, we go, zut, zut, zut. okay, wand me, boop, boop. Okay, you get through all that, security theater, and then we get to the other side. My partner says, okay, I got to get that ticket. We're only about two, two gates up the, up the way. So we all get down to the gate. Now we're down to like six maybe seven minutes before before the door shuts. The people are already on the plane. We're saying, wait, don't lock the door yet. We can do it. Kathy goes, I got the ticket, $55. We got tickets. She, she prints them out of the thing. The lady from Southwest says, get on board. Well, our friends are there. No, get on board. Are you not going to? We get on board. We're saying, oh, my God. What happened to Al and Ronnie? Are they going to make it? And he goes, my phone's still clocking as we're going down the jetway. His phone is clocking from buying these tickets. 
And at the end, they shut the door, the plane pushed off the ramp. Our friends didn't get on board. We're like, oh, golly, talk about feeling bad, survivor guilt. So what happened is, is that we got home, we got back to Vegas. It was a direct flight, too. We got back to Vegas, and the next, in about three hours, uh, we had gotten here. Three hours later, we make a phone call, and it's Ronnie and Al. Hey, we made it home on the next flight. Everything's golden. So there are some good news. There's some bad news. My bad news was, in this particular case, Mike might remember that I gave him a call the next day and said, Mike, can you find my bag in the system? Because it went to Charlotte, and it's still sitting there. <laughs> but when it's at home, it's not that big a deal. So as you guys can all see, you know, it's, it may seem like a jet set lifestyle, but sometimes it's just a cheap ride. Thank you very much. Uh,